In my last build, I made this puzzle here, which is a cutter cylinder. You have to offset the middle layer by 45 degrees to start doing some turns. And I thought this was a really cool build, but it also kind of gave me the bug for the 45 degree angle again. So, what I want to do today is I want to try what can really only be described as a tennis ball seam pattern around a 3x3. My idea is that if I just cut at 45 degrees around, I'll end up with kind of two interlocking pieces that are unmodified, and I'm just really curious to see what it looks like. One of the things I love about building puzzles is I get to experiment with different designs, and this will be no different. So, let's get started. Now, as usual with my experiments, I don't really know what it is that I'm doing here. I know how to build what I want, but I don't know what it is that I want. So after I do all of the cuts, I think I'm going to extend out on all the areas that I haven't cut down. But for now, let's start cutting everything. And before I do that, safety glasses on. And let's tilt the table to 45 degrees. I had already tightened everything up so that it wouldn't turn, and all I had to do now was cut all of the edges off. I was kind of making the cuts up as I went along and I nearly lost track for a second, but that looks really cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all of the flashing and just the little bits of melted plastic and, and then I'm going to fill all of the pieces with epoxy sculpt. Now the reason that I remove all of the melted plastic is because those areas create air pockets when I'm filling the pieces and so it's much better to remove the plastic now than it is to repair the pieces later. One of my all-time least favorite things about modifying any puzzle is the caps inside each of the pieces. Now, when the cube is unmodified, everything's fine because all of the pieces like to hold on to one another. But when you start cutting into everything and you expose all of those caps, you only have to disassemble the puzzle once to lose track of a lot of them. And then you find that you have to have a load of spare pieces just so that you can find the part you need and it gets really annoying very quickly. So now is a perfect time to glue all of those caps in place. Now I've just gone around and one drop of super glue is enough. And now I won't be losing any of those caps. I got out the epoxy sculpt and I started filling all of the pieces, but as I was filling everything and waiting for it to harden, I had a really cool idea and this is so typical of my experiments, I wanted to do concave edges. Now when I built my Giga Rocket, which is probably one of my better modifications, I had to do some concave pieces and I did that by sanding everything on the end of my belt sander. It's just occurred to me that this is the first time I will have done something on a Giga Minx before I've done it on a 3x3. I was really careful to make sure that the puzzle didn't skip, seeing as how the area that I was sanding it on was kind of an all-contact surface. This means that any point on the surface is contacting the belt, even though it's curved, and because of that, I wasn't really sure how the puzzle was going to behave as I was sanding it. Luckily, as I was sanding, the only problem I had was making sure I was sanding directly down the edge. The puzzle had a tendency to twist from side to side, and I had to put pressure on certain areas in order to prevent it from doing that. But after I had finished sanding all of the edges, and I thought I'd developed a pretty good knack for doing it, this is what the puzzle looked like, and I was really happy with it. Ta-da! This looks really cool. I've repaired some small areas that needed to be repaired, but overall, I wasn't expecting this to actually work. I don't know why I've never done a concave edge modification before, but this is something that I'm definitely going to explore more in future. But I was going to extend these areas out here, and now I don't think that's a good idea. The reason for that is, if you imagine these curves continue up, I'm not really sure where the extension would come out to, and this is something that I definitely need to think about before I jump in and do. So for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to disassemble everything and I'm just going to round off all the pieces and finish the puzzle up. But I'm going to see how the shape works and how it looks. And then I'm definitely going to revisit this puzzle later on. I'm not really sure what the rule of thumb is here for sanding a, a concave surface. But all I'm trying to do is just smooth everything over without changing the shape, which shouldn't be too difficult. 
famous last words. Oh, this isn't going to work. When in doubt, WD-40. All right, so on the left we have an unfinished piece, and on the right I've done my best to sand down that concave surface. There's still a few scratch marks in there, but overall I think that that looks pretty nice. Time to do the rest of them. I was hoping to get some B-roll before the sun went down, but unfortunately it doesn't look like that's going to happen. But regardless, the puzzle will get finished because, well, I'm not going to let it not get finished. Now, one of the things I noticed as I was sanding is I couldn't quite sand perfectly down the edge. The puzzle kind of wanted to twist a little bit. And as a result, I was having a bit of trouble getting the shape to be uniform. So when I put the puzzle back together, I guarantee you there's going to be some subtle mismatches between the pieces. Now normally what I would do in that situation is I would just take the puzzle back over to my belt sander and sand it down some more, and then I would take it apart and I would, well, I probably wouldn't have rounded over the pieces before I did that, but then I would start rounding over all of the pieces. But the reason that I'm not going to do that this time around is because I want to see just how close I got to the proper shape. Sometimes it's pretty helpful with an experiment to see your mistakes and see where you went wrong, so that way you know what to do better next time. This is an experiment, after all. And in case you're wondering, I still have no idea what I'm doing. In fact, it's been the case for a long time. I used to study physics. It wasn't even physics, it was geophysics. I mean, that's worse. And here it is, the puzzle is assembled, but one thing I noticed as I was reassembling everything is if I just do this move, I end up with this shape here, which I think looks even cooler. Now as for the actual pieces themselves, I noticed that the concave surfaces actually line up pretty well, and I was quite accurate with how well I sanded everything, which is good. But I also see some areas that I have to improve on, so this is definitely something that needs a revisit. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sticker all of these pieces up and I'm going to call this puzzle done. But I'm really happy with this experiment and I'm glad that I took the time to try it out. Time to cut stickers. Okay, now I have to pick a color scheme. And before I do that, I have to figure out, am I going to sticker it up in this state? Or in this state? Maybe I can have it be a two solution. Hmm. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a Christmas ornament. I don't even know what this build is anymore. Uh, <laughs> this kind of looks like it belongs on a Christmas tree. So I think I think that's going to work. Now I have to sticker it up just to look nice, but I suppose that's not really much of a change from everything else I've done. It's just that now it will actually have a purpose. That, that's a lot deeper than I meant it to be. I've been, I've been listening to too much Alan Watts. This is how every single sticker that I have cut so far in this series was cut. Mm. Perfect. Ta-da! Everything stick it up, and this is what the puzzle looks like. Now, you're probably wondering by looking at this, what's the point of the yellow and the white centerpieces, and ta-da! I've decided to stick at the edges, uh, or at least the inside parts with the yellow or the white. I used a different shade of yellow, I probably should have used a slightly lighter one, but I still think this looks really cool, and I think it's going to look great hanging on my Christmas tree. 
Now as far as the actual turning of this puzzle is concerned, I'll do a checkerboard pattern here, and this plus this move, I think this would look really nice, like maybe hanging from a Christmas tree or something like that. Uh, I think both sides look really nice. I think I learned quite a lot by uh, doing this concave edge modification. I wasn't expecting to do that at the beginning of this video, but you know, that's how most of my experiments go. I really want to try and do more of this because I think that once I learn how to sand things concave like this, it'll open up a lot more opportunities to me. But one thing I should point out with that is that the end of my belt sander only has a fixed radius, which means I can only ever sand things into the curve that you see here. If I want to do a larger, more shallow curve, or a much smaller curve, I'm not going to be able to use my belt sander. But that's something that I'm going to have to figure out later on. For now, I just have to figure out how to do it in the first place, and that means learning, and that means doing more modifications like this. But anyways, I hope you guys like this puzzle. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.